city. And uh, I want to, to talk a little bit about uh, things we see at, at Amazon, um, what, what would, works well for customers, and what are like best practices to, to run at scale, and, and uh, yeah, basically observations and recommendations. Um, with the background of, of yeah, being, being in Amazon, running uh, hundreds of thousands of servers, and uh, being able to, to, uh, to look into how customers are solving scalability needs. So as said, um, I work for OpsWorks. We do application uh, automation on, on top of EC2 and uh, try to help customers to, to apply best practice patterns um, in their operations, deployment, and so on. And the, the first rule that everybody, uh, regardless if you're running on a single box, a very small application, or if you're running on thousands of machines, the first rule to, to learn is uh, things will break, always, uh, at some point. Even the best fault-tolerant system, at some point it will break. And the big question is, how do you cope with that? How do you handle this case? And the, the, if you take away one lesson from my talk, it is the idea that you should embrace and plan for failure, because it will happen. So if you, if you close your eyes and, and dug your head in, in the sand, it will not go away. So the, 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 um, I think the, 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 the one trick, if, the, if there is any, to how to cope with that is you should, you should embrace it. You should think of failure of, of something that will happen is, is not something bad, it's just a behavior of the system. And the big question is, how do I cope with that behavior? And I want to talk about a couple of ways to do it. Um, probably one of the, of the most important lessons is you should divide and conquer. I mean, that's that, that, that famous saying that everybody learned in, in computer science uh, 101 um, very much holds true to big distributed applications. Um, try to divide them in, in simple and, and small blocks that are decoupled, that are easier to handle. Um, we had in the first talk uh, a similar idea from, a, um, from a, a developer perspective, but also from an operational perspective. It's very important uh, because if smaller components, um, it's much easier to handle uh, coupling between them, to decouple them, to handle failure, to, to um, know that the other component will not always be there. So you can handle something like exponential back off. You can handle uh, what is if the other component is not available, uh, how do I do that? And um, the whole goal of that is also to what we at Amazon call limit the blast radius. Because bad things will happen, so try to, to constrain their effect. Try to make sure um, a failed deployment doesn't affect all of your service. Try to make sure a bad switch doesn't break all your data center. Try to make sure uh, a bug you introduced doesn't affect all the customers. Um, and, th and that's a very, a very big idea where we see successful customers are asking this themselves, um, what does this change mean? How are we limiting the effect of that change? Um, and, and of course, the big idea behind that is you should isolate your components. You, you should try to make sure they're not, they don't have a bad effect on each other. One component becoming very slow, latency going high, uh, the other component should expect it, should be able to handle it. Um, and uh, you, you don't have to expect that the other thing will always be there. Like, if you use a central queuing server, uh, at some point it will be gone. You, you, you're failing to talk to it. So try to queue locally first, like cache it locally until the big thing is, is available again and then deliver it. Or, or have, have strategies for delivering the same packet or the same message through multiple paths and then uh, converge them again so you can handle one path breaking down. Um, one very cool technique that I don't think enough people are using is, is what we call uh, one box deployment. So let's say you want to roll out new code. Uh, the, the, the simplest strategy, and I think uh, the, the strategy which probably most people are, are doing is they're deploying it on all their machines, right? Uh, where what you should actually be doing is deploy it on one machine first. And then measure latency, CPU consumption, memory consumption, uh, requests per second, orders per second, whatever your, your key performance metric is. How many, user, how many page views you have, uh, how many uh, items you sell, how many people are registering, measure it on that one box. Compare it to all the others in your fleet. Uh, see if it's within a certain standard deviation over time. And then if, you, if you're happy with that, you, let's say you, you waited an hour or two, you observed the metrics, and it looks good, then you can proceed with the deployment. So then you can deploy to, to a data center, to an availability zone uh, in, in, Amazon, in the Amazon world. Um, don't deploy to all of them at once. Deploy to one first, and again, measure, compare, automate it. Don't do it manually, but, but have a test 
that gathers all of those metrics and compares them and, and tells you, oh, this deployment looks bad. It introduced a 10% latency. I assure you want to proceed. CPU consumption is way high on that box. I assure you want to deploy it with all the others. And only if you're sure it's okay, deploy it, uh, uh, proceed in your deployment pipeline. And again, don't deploy to all your servers. Let's say you have an, a very international application, you have customers all over the globe, deploy to the region where you have the fewest customers first. So if there is an impact, it's limited to a, to a, to a single set of your customers. And only once you're sure, once, if you, if you like, wait enough time, let it automatically triple down to all the, all the regions, all the data centers you have. Um, so the, it's a, a similar pattern, a similar idea, where you should automate all the things that are hard. Everything you're worrying about, you, you have uh, sleepless nights over, oh, what do I do if this component is failing? Uh, hopefully it will not uh, fail. Please, God, don't let this component fail. Um, the, the right behavior should be, I know it's going to fail. How do I automate it? How do I cope with it? And, and how do I um, stress test it all the time so it's not becoming a problem anymore? Uh, one good example, and which is a cool idea, uh, that we see customers are doing is replacing your fleet all the time. Um, patch management and applying security fixes to running servers and upgrading like the, to the newest Apache release of their security bug fix, um, that's a hard thing to do. It could have downtime, and it's, it's, it's something that not a lot of people uh, uh, love because it's not easy to do. So what, what the cloud allows you to do, because everything has an API, is to say, I replace every server, like let's say, once a day. So at any point in time, I boot new machines, they install security updates, they install the kernel updates, they reboot, deploy my app, they look fine, I put them in the load balancer. If again, latency tests, CPU tests say they're behaving normally, I kill one of the old ones. And this way you like, like, like um, rotating through your fleet at, the, at a steady pace. So if a server should actually fail because something is wrong with it, you don't care. It's being replaced anyhow, it's like something you do thousands of times every day. So it's not a problem. Um, similarly, backup and restore. Like, that's a very, very tough one for a lot of people, and, and uh, if you're good, you have a backup strategy. If you're better, you have, uh, you, you test it, you have game days, you try to, your disaster recovery strategy out. Um, but very few people do it, because it's hard. And it shouldn't be. Because if it's hard, you need to test it, you need to automate it, you need to, to, to practice it until it isn't hard. Um, so for example, if you have a fleet of database servers, um, and you do regular backups, and in theory you could restore one of the slaves out of a backup or whatever, like, do it all the time. Take a regular pattern which would work for you, and like, let's say, let's, let's replace that box with a fresh copy from backup and see if everything is normal. See if there is user impact, and hopefully there isn't. But this way, if you do it all the time, you know there will not be a user impact if one of our database servers will fail. Because we can replace it from backup automatically within an hour. Uh, for that time, all the others are taking the extra load and I know it works. So if disaster strikes, I'm ready. And that's the, the core idea um, of, of practicing those hard things until they're becoming easy, until, until you, it's, it's nothing you worry about. And, and that's the big, the big strategy, how you cope with, with, with scale, how you cope with complexity, is um, get rid of it, try it, practice it, until you don't fear it. And, uh, one very famous and great example, I think, is the, the Chaos Monkey, right? Um, by now, hopefully, everybody, everybody knows about that concept. Uh, Netflix, uh, one of our customers, is very famous for, for first writing about that. So what they do, they have a set of scripts, which they call uh, monkeys, um, and they, in, they introduce failure into your system. So they constantly killing instances, introducing latency, uh, introducing routing black holes in their system, so that they have to respond to it. They, they, they um, instead of like hoping failure is, ra is, is very rare, they, they introduce failure on a daily basis so that they can automatically respond to it, they, that they know it works. We don't have to fear uh, a network issue where one server is, is like black holing all packages. We don't have to fear reduced latency between the database servers and the app servers because our system handles it every day and responds to it every day. And in order to do all of this, um, you, you need one, one thing that is, that is very important, and uh, that is monitoring and measuring. You need, uh, uh, that is the, the basis for everything, and I can't stress that enough. Um, I, I think w without monitoring and measuring and alarming, uh, all of this wouldn't be possible. 
in order to automatically respond, you need to, to get known about the, uh, notified about the fact in an automated fashion. So monitor, I mean, the, the easy things which, which a lot of people are doing, of course, is you monitor the host, you monitor like uh, RAM, consumption, CPU, whatever, but measure everything you can, right? Uh, measure your key performance metrics, orders per second, uh, user registrations per second, uh, page views, what, all of those things. Measure, 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 and, and uh, correlate, and um, alarm, and aggregate. And uh, this way you can, you can do all of those things that I mentioned. You only can replace your, your database server if you see, oh, it has reduced late, uh, um, increased latency, if you actually notice, and if you get, get alarmed, and if, if there is an automatic response for that. And um, that, is, that is something that I think is, is way underused. And um, there are unfortunately not, not um, very, very good um, solutions for that. And that, I think one of the space where, where open source uh, monitoring and, and alarming solutions are not, not good enough. Um, and, and I think there, there is something where in the future we will see a lot more development uh, in, in that space. Um, one thing that you can do once you have those metrics and, and, um, and data is you can do simple things that are obvious, uh, like auto-scaling. I mean, that's easy, that's, that's something uh, where, of course, uh, Amazon is very famous for to say, oh, I started with one machine, and then the load increased, and I threw hundreds of uh, more of that. Um, that. That's an easy pattern, but it's a very powerful one. So you, you can, if you measure the, the request per second, you see, oh, we have more requests per second, I need to add more capacity, I need to add more servers. Um, that's like the, the first step you can do. Uh, but there are other things that you can do that, um, that, that are also very, very cool and very uh, effective. So you, you should try to experiment with that data. So for example, um, at Amazon we have uh, a lot of different instance types, different server types, if you like, that you could use. And uh, customers are always asking, okay, which is the best one for my workload? Should I use more, like a, a larger number of smaller ones? Should I use... Uh, uh, a smaller number of bigger ones, should I use more CPU, less CPU, whatever, like the, the, the answer is, uh, of course, it's very, it depends, right? That's the, the famous answer. Um, it depends on your application, on your customers, on your use case. And it's very hard to like, like if you sit down with a pencil and paper and try to find out what, it, how, what should I use? Uh, and the, the answer could be, let the algorithm decide. Like, let your, let your measurements win, win that uh, contest for you. So what about you, you start in an automated fashion a large number of instances with the different sizes and whatever, uh, and you, you just try it out, yeah? You, there, you, you, you just measure your key performance indicator, how they behave if you have a larger number of smaller servers, what changes if you have a, a, like, like faster cores, uh, but less of them and so on, and then you can automatically respond to that. You can say, um, you can basically let them compete for, for, for the cost effectiveness and, and uh, set different goals, like I want to have a low latency or I want to save money, and you can do all of this if you measure what the impact of this uh, is. And there are a lot of different cool things that you can do. I mean, it's, it's kind of like do a B testing for your, uh, for your hardware, right? Uh, and, and that idea is, I think, a very powerful one. And uh, for that, you need good metrics, and you need, you need to be able to automatically respond to your system. And uh, that said, um, all of those, those, those ideas, in the end, should, of course, uh, mean that, that you will be successful. And uh, this is uh, my, my, my short, uh, uh, hopefully a little bit inspirational talk into what we see, what people use, and what we, what we think is, are good patterns to handle uh, scalability, what, what good ideas are, and you should apply them, no matter what, what your, your, uh, your, the size of your application is, no matter what the... Um, the size of your infrastructure is. I think you can benefit them, uh, benefit from them, even if you have just one application server run like a, a small uh, PHP installation, like let's say you have one WordPress server and that's it. Um, still, you, you should apply those patterns and, 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 and handle that. Um, and I think this is one big um, key to be successful uh, as a business. And uh, with that, um, I'm done with my talk. And we're up for questions. <laughs>